Now let's talk about audio unit instruments multi-out support that's now introduced in Cubase's 3.3. So why is this important and how can you use it? So this is a big, big deal when you want to process and mix your multi-out instruments. Now you can do this. So let me give you an example. I have a drum pattern here. Let's have a listen. And as you can see, with this pattern, we have several elements. We have the kick drum, snare, hi-hat, and so on and so forth. But if you notice, everything comes out of one single channel. Which means I can only process this as a stereo out. I can only apply effects like compression, EQ, reverb to the whole drum kit and not, let's say, just the snare or just the hi-hat. I can also not pan things around. But now, with Cubase's 3.3, we have support for multi-out instruments. Let me show you what the difference is. Let's copy this part and paste it to this instance of EG Pulse that I'm using here. Now, this is a multi-output instance of this instrument, which means that if I play this back now, I can only hear the kick drum. That's because now I can activate several outputs for this instrument and I can have all the different elements of the drum kit in a separate channel. Let me show you how easy it is to do this. So I'm going to my multi-output AU instrument. And as you can see, when we go to the name of the instrument, now we have a new button there. It says add 15 tracks. So that means that this instrument has 15 more outputs. So if we click on that, you will see that now all of a sudden <laughs> we have 15 more channels to play with. And this means that I can now have every element to its own channel. Let's have a listen. So as you can see, we have the kick drum here, here we have the snare, we also have the clap, the hi-hat, all these things. And of course, if I want to, I can go ahead and rename the channel. So maybe I want to name this kick. Then I want to go to this one and call it snare and so on and so forth. And then we have a lot of flexibility. For example, all these channels can hold MIDI data as well. So as you can see right now, all my MIDI is on the kick drum channel. But if I wanted to record a crash cymbal, for example, in the crash channel, I can do this straight on the crash channel so that I can have a little bit more flexibility when editing my MIDI as well. For example, let's go here and I'm going to start recording. And as you can see, now recorded my cymbals on a different channel and they will also play on the respective mixer channel as well. And now we have a lot of flexibility when we want to mix our multi-hour instrument. So let me focus on these drums here. You will see that now, first of all, I can really listen to what's going on and now I can start mixing my drum kit, I can do panning, I can add different effects, I can change the levels of each instrument. Let's have a listen. Maybe make the kick drum a little bit louder. I also want to add a little bit of reverb to that snare. and maybe a little bit of thump. You know, pan my toms, add reverbs, make the sound much bigger and much more exciting. But now we have control over every individual element. And that applies to any multi-output AU instrument, but also multi-out media effects as well.